Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about distance and translation constraints and how you can leverage those to create a, a variety of different effects. Now I've got two examples for you. In the first example, we'll actually go through and um, set those constraints up together and then I'll show you how to apply the techniques that we use in the first example to create something um, entirely different. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's hop into it. Okay, so Fred the Redhead here is gonna help us in talking about the constraints that I mentioned earlier. And what we're gonna be doing is setting up a series of controls that allows us to create, um, or allows us to uh, control the direction that our character is looking. Now, by the end of it, we're gonna have a result of um, a, a facial control that allows us to create an almost 3D-like effect. Um, and then we can apply those techniques to this to another example, um, which is completely different, but uses the exact same technique. So before we actually go in and start rigging things up, let's take a look and see how the character is set up. So if you've seen other Rive Unplugged videos, then you already know what this root group's here for. Um, if not, this group is here um, for once we've implemented our character into whatever app or game or whatever. Um, if we need to resize or reposition the character on the artboard, we can use this group even after we have animations created. Now below that, we have a main group um, that has all of the different groups uh, for the shapes that make up our character. Um, I'm also going to put all of my controls under this group so that we can um, use this group to animate the position, rotation, scale, whatever of the um, character. Now, as I said, we have all the um, groups underneath that that have all the artwork in it, and the artwork's not overly complex. Maybe the only thing to note here is how the hair is created, all the different hair pieces. I started with a main shape, and then to create the highlights, I just duplicated that main shape, moved it under the main shape, and then um, positioned it where I needed it to be, and then changed the color. So we've talked about how the character is set up, so we can actually start going in and adding in all the different things that we need for our controls. So the first thing that we need to do is create some bones. So I'm gonna activate the bone tool with the B key and just create a bone for the neck. Now, this bone is gonna be used for um, a couple different things. Not only is it gonna be used to control the tilt of the head, but it's also gonna be used as an anchor bone for when we actually go through the binding and weighting process. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about it as we go through that process, but um, for now, we can go ahead and move on. So I've got a neck bone. The next bone I need to create is the bone that's gonna be used to control which direction the face is looking. So I'm just gonna activate the bone tool again and then drop in a bone roughly centered on the face and eyes. Now, if you need to move your bone around, you can just select it and drag it around, but you can see that the snapping um, is making it a little bit hard to get it exactly where I want. So you can hold Command or Control and it'll toggle that snapping off and you can get it exactly where you want it. So once we have our bones created, I'm just gonna drag and drop those onto the character group so that when I move that character group, the bones move along with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename my bone. So this bone down here, I'm gonna call it the neck bone. And oh, I also want to add a little note on here that it's my anchor. Now this bone, I've already said, is gonna control the look of our face, so I'm gonna rename it um, front. Um, you can call it face control, whatever you want. Um, but we need an additional bone um, to actually create the 3D effect that we're going for. So I'm just gonna duplicate this small bone there and rename it back. And what this bone is for is if this front bone controls the front of the face, I want this backbone to move in the opposite direction and control the stretching or compressing of um, the outside of the face. So this front bone controls the front of the face and the backbone controls um, basically that, um, that stretching and compressing that I'll, I'll talk to you about in a second. Now, I, what I don't want to have to do is every time I move the front bone, reposition the backbone in the opposite direction. So to 
make this a little bit easier, we can use a translation constraint. Now what a translation constraint does is it copies the position properties of a target object. So in this case, we're gonna create a constraint on the backbone here, and we're gonna grab that translation constraint, and then I want to target the front bone. So you can see when I move the front bone now, the backbone is copying the translation or, or the uh, position properties. Well, I said before I want it to move in the opposite direction. So to achieve that, we just need to go into the translation and change the strength property. Now we can reduce the strength property. And then when I move the front bone, you can see that it's basically copying uh, or applying half of the position value, but we want the inverse. So we need instead of positive 100, we need a negative 100 strength. And you can see now it's going in the opposite direction. So instead of having to create two keys on our timeline, now we only have to create one. So that's gonna make it a lot easier on us uh, when we actually go in and animate the character. Okay, so we have all the bones that we need, so we can start actually binding and weighting our paths um, to these bones and then um, and then go from there. So let's start with the uh, head bone here. I'm only gonna show you how to do a couple of these and then I'll jump forward and have the character rigged up and then we'll talk through a little bit more. So let's start with the head and the head is gonna make the effect really apparent um, when we um, weight it. So with the head selected, I'm just gonna hit enter and you can see that now I have this bind bones option here um, that is selectable. That's because I have the path layer selected and I can just hit that plus button and start selecting my bones. Now I wanna select the neck bone first and then go in and select that front and back bone. Now when I go into edit vertices mode, which just requires me to hit enter one more time, we can look at the weighting for all of our different vertices. Now you can see that they're all weighted to the neck bone or that anchor bone. Now the reason that I've done that is because I don't want to split my influence um, between the front and back bone because if you remember how weighting works, the uh, sum of all the percents here for all your different bones have to equal 100. So if I don't have this third bone, then that means I have to split influence between the front and back bone and we'll have way too much influence and it's gonna deform the character way too much. So by adding in that third bone, we can anchor most of that influence onto the neck so that we can just give the front and back bone just a little bit of influence so that we don't deform our character too much. Now, um, for this, what we want to do is keep in mind how the uh, face is going to deform as we move those bones. So the front bone, as I said before, is going to control the front of the face. So if I'm looking at the camera and I turn to the right, you can see that my chin follows the front of my face, but then the outsides of my uh, face, so like the right side, shrinks a little bit and the left side stretches out. So that's how we want to think about this when we're um, uh, doing the weighting. So the chin, we want it to follow this front bone. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of influence, like 15%. And then the vertices on the outside, we want to uh, give some influence to that backbone so that it stretches and compresses each side of the face. So I'm just going to give it 5%, so just a little bit less. And then let's go ahead and test it out and uh, see what that looks like. So you can see, just like what I was showing you on the camera, when the chin goes to the right, that same side of the face shrinks, and then uh, the opposite side of the face actually stretches out. So that's how we're going to create this 3D effect. And we're going to apply that to um, some of these other shapes to uh, reinforce that effect. So we've done the chin, or the face. Let's go ahead and do one of these hair pieces, and then um, I'll show you how we're going to set the rest of it up. So I'm going to do this main hair piece here and oh, I need to bind all this stuff. Okay. So I'm, once again, I'm going to bind the neck first and then it doesn't matter which order I bind these two small bones. All right. And then I can go into edit vertices mode. And for the hair, I want all of the stuff towards the center of the face. So the inside of the hair all the way up to the scalp, I want the front bone to control that. And I'm going to give it the exact same influence I gave the chin. And then everything on the outside, 
I'm going to give the same influence to the backbone as I did for the side of the face. Now, when I move that, um, when I move that front bone, you can see that the hair is stretching just like the side of the face is. Okay, so I'm going to jump forward in time here and uh, go ahead and set up the rest of the shapes in the hair, and then we'll go ahead and fix up the rest of the rig. So I'll see you on the other side of that. Okay, so I finished binding and weighting the um, pieces that I was talking about, which is the hair, and uh, let's see the final result of that. So um, oops, let me grab the right bone here. So you can see that um, right now our... Um, our character's face is actually creating a, a relatively nice 3D effect. Now, you'll, you will notice that there's a little bit of tearing here in the hair where it's actually separating from the face, which is something that we'll fix in a minute. And um, we still have a couple more pieces to set up. So we have the front hair, the mouth, the eyes, and the ears. Now, instead of going through the process of binding and weighting all of those shapes onto the bones, which um, if you've gone through this process before, you know can... In, can be quite tedious and take quite a bit of time. Um, so what I would recommend you do is actually use translation constraints for these types of things. Now, um, because these shapes aren't actually going to be deforming, we can get away with that. If you actually wanted to get that 3D effect on, on these pieces where it actually looks like it turns to the side, you'd have to go through that. But in this case, we're not going to be doing that. So to do this and set this up, what we're going to do is add another translation constraint. And we're going to start with the front hair piece here. And um, we're going to need to adjust our strength and give it a target. So if we just leave the strength at 100 and we target that front bone, you can see that it snaps directly to the front bone. And we also can't move the hair piece back into position. So that's where this offset toggle comes in. Now, the offset toggle is not going to give us a perfect result. Um, what it's going to do is when we toggle this and target that front bone again, you can see that it does move the shape. Um, and what it's doing is it's adding these values together. So the source um, or the, uh, the constraint owner's position values, it's adding those values to the values of the front bone's position values to get the final um, position. Now, obviously this is not where we want the hair. So we'll have to move the hair back in a position and get it about where we want it. Now, if we wanted this to stay in the same spot when we use that offset toggle, what we'd have to do is make sure that when we set this bone up, that it was actually in the zero, zero position. Now, because it's not, we got a little bit of weird um, movement there, but it's not a big deal because like I said, that offset allows us to move it into position. Now, another thing that we need to do is change the strength value for the constraint because right now it's at 100%. So it's following that bone's um, position um, by basically a one-to-one. -one, um, it's, it's copying those position values one-to-one. -one. Now, if you remember what we gave the... Um, the vertex values here when we were weighting it, we used 15%. So if we think about this constraint as if we're weighting it to the bone, then we can change this strength value to 15%. And it's actually going to um, move at the exact same um, pace as all the other parts that are weighted to this bone. Now you can see that we have a little bit of an offset there. So I would recommend changing the strength value before you... Um, before you actually target the bone and um, toggle that offset uh, so that you don't have to move it twice, but I'll just go ahead and reposition it. And there you go. So the hair is now set up and we can move on and use that same principle for the eyes, mouth, and ear. So let's do the eyes next. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a translation constraint. And this time I'm gonna change the strength Go ahead and toggle that offset and then target the bone. And you can see that the eyes actually didn't move very much. So um, we don't have to worry about repositioning those. So let's do the same thing with the mouth group here. Translation constraint, change the strength, toggle that offset, and then 
hit the bone. Now I did jump just a little bit, but it's not so much that um, I'm upset with the position, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually move anything around. Now the ears, um, we're gonna do roughly the same thing, but instead we're gonna think about these as if they're being weighted just like the back of the hair. So when we go and set up the strength, instead of doing um, 15%, we're gonna do negative 5%. Because if you remember, that's the weighting that we gave to the outside bits of the hair um, and the head to get that stretching and um, contracting um, effect. And then we'll just target that front bone. You can see it bumped up the ears just a little bit, but again, not so much that I'm upset with it. Oop, that's the backbone. Let me grab this front one. And we're also gonna do something to make that bone just a little bit easier to grab. So you can see that the, the 3D effect that we have or the two and a half D effect that we have now is pretty good, um, but there's still just a couple more issues. So we've got this, um, this piece out here on the side that's not working uh, quite how we want it. So, um, we can go ahead and fix that by using a distance constraint. Now, the distance constraint is gonna help us limit the movement of this front bone. So the first thing we're gonna do is add in a new group and make sure it's nested underneath that main character group. And then I'm gonna change the style to target. And then I'm gonna re re rename this face control. Then we're going to nest that front bone underneath the face control. So now it's out of the way, makes it a little bit easier to grab. Now to fix the problem of this, we're going to need um, we're going to need another group. So I'm just going to duplicate this face control group, remove that bone, change the target back to group, and rename it target. All right. Now it's in the same position as our. Um, our face control, which is going to be kind of important because I want all of my movement to be judged from or uh, measured from this position when we go and actually set up our constraints. So with the face control selected, I'm going to I'm going to select a distance constraint and then target our target group. Now you'll see that instead of being able to move that um, const or that target as far away as we want, this circle is uh, basically the, the maximum distance that we can move this target away from, um, or the uh, face control away from the target. So you can see that this is limiting, um, limiting that motion, which has, uh, first of all, fixed the tear on the side of the head. Um, we can still kind of see some of that space between the top of the head. And so, um, and so what we can do is go back and change this weighting value. Let's drop this down to like two. Let's see if that fixed it. It didn't quite fix it. So what we can do is go into the distance constraint and um, shrink that distance down just a little bit and see if that gives us the result that we're um, looking for. You can see it's still a little bit out of whack there. So instead of changing that anymore, what I'm going to do is actually just move those vertices up and that should fix the problem there. It does. And we can probably give ourselves a little bit of extra distance. And I would say we'll, we'll increase the distance until that hair is just about to tear. So that gives us the maximum range for the current rig. Now, um, you can continue to make um, adjustments to your bind or your weighting values on the hair uh, to increase the distance that you can get from this distance constraint without it tearing. Um, but I think you have the general idea to go in and spend the time to do that. Um, anyways, that um, I think that's about it on this. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the uh, benefits of using this translation constraint, especially for something like the eyes, is that if we um, if we bind and weight the eyes to the bone, we lose the ability to use the scale property to create like a blinking effect or a surprised facial expression, um, things like that. So it's just another added benefit of um, skipping the binding weighting process and using um, distance or uh, translation constraints to actually um, set up those extra pieces for your facial rig. So that's it for this example. Let's go ahead and hop into the other one and I'll show you how to uh, use these 
exact techniques on something that's completely different. So let's look at that now. Now in this file, what I've done is create a parallaxing effect just using um, translation constraints and then uh, using that distance constraint to control the limit of my um, control. So you can see I've got my, um, my control here which controls the uh, parallax effect. And you can see when I move that, all of the objects in the background move around and the foreground moves around as well. And I'm just using the exact same um, concepts as before where um, I've got distance constraints on all of my objects. They're targeting this and they're using a variety of different strengths. So the stuff in the foreground moves the least. So it's got the lowest amount of um, uh, strength for that target. And the things in the background have a slightly larger um, strength, but it's inverted so that they move the opposite direction. Now, the thing with the ships here is that I have um, a double stacked um, translation so that the entire group pans around at about the same speed, but the objects within that group can sort of parallax. So you can see that my um, the ships within that have different um, strengths depending on how far they are away from the camera. The farther are the the farther they are away, the more um, the strength actually takes over, and that sort of allows them to uh, get pretty close to overlapping. You can maybe see it a little bit more on these ships. You can see how they kind of overlap and then um, extend away from each other. So like I said, I'm using the exact same concept in, uh, for this and just thinking about the strength values in a different way to create a, a whole new effect, but I'm still using the exact same constraints as I was before. Um, once again, I'm using that distance constraint um, to make sure that my... Um, to make sure that I don't deform the um, the image too much where like the outside of the artwork actually starts to show up um, on the screen. So um, that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you all learned something about um, these constraints. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave um, leave a comment in the uh, on the video. If you like the stuff, go ahead and um, give us a thumbs up. If you go through and create anything with these constraints, make sure you share it on the community because we'd love to see what you're working on. Um, and yeah, with that, that's going to be it. I hope you all enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.